Hey, Lexi. I want to dedicate this episode to my late friend, the tattoo artist, Jeff Brown. Uh, we probably did the same thing when he actually passed away back in 2021, but it just felt like an appropriate way to start this episode considering the subject matter. So let's get the conversation started. Hello and welcome to Lexicon. It is Maddie. Lexi. Dylan. Casey. That's right. Casey is back because we're talking tattoos and it's the second most experienced uh, tattoo receiver in the house. It feels appropriate. As I said, it also felt appropriate to, to pay respects to our late friend and former tattoo artist, Mr. Jeff Brown from Custom Touch Tattoo, because 10 years ago, almost to the day, on August 15th, 2013, Casey and I walked into our friend's tattoo shop and got our uh, first of many tattoos. Nice. Now, I guess to be fair, Jeff technically wasn't our friend at the time. In fact, we'd only met him the day before. Uh, but he would grow to uh, be our friend over the intervening 79 months as I at least got tattooed at least once in each of those 79 months. Wow. For a, uh, an eventual grand total of 131 tattoos. Wow. Uh, Casey couldn't quite keep pace with me, but she did get her fair share of ink topping out at 31 tattoos. Nice. Alex has one. And I have zero. Alex you is just fact, I feel like I'm not qualified to be on this podcast. <laughs> you know, to be fair, we literally said, don't be on the show. Go play okay, Baldur's Gate. No, 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 no. It's not that we don't want you. No, bye. Come here, leave. No, I did not say you to leave. <laughs> you said that you didn't feel qualified to be on the show. After telling us earlier, no, I want to be on the show. So I'm just saying, don't come out like, I shouldn't be here. When you had the chance to not be here, and you chose to be here. You're here. You're queer. Deal with it. Uh, I was going to say, you just turned 18. You haven't had much opportunity to legally have a tattoo. Mm -hmm. So if you have tattoos, I have questions. <laughs> Maybe I can find some tip for your tattoos. I mean, to be fair, there are a lot of people who got tattoos before they were 18. Definitely. And for all I know, within the last two months, Gabba's tattooed himself. No. Uh, yeah, Ow. I don't think that that happened. <laughs> I, I'm, I, that's one it's thing so I'm pretty sure you could count on. It. Oh, I don't know a single way to well, do it. Oh, you so. have the internet literally in your hand. Yeah, I'm not looking that up. <laughs> Could have bought a tattoo machine for all I know. You've had money. I'd like to have a tattoo machine. I don't trust myself to do tattoos. I, I'm, I'm almost to the point that you're about to be conscripted to do it. I just... Like, let's go, it's Alex. It's not a skill I want to learn, and I just... I don't trust myself. I'm not... I'm to not it's I'm, too permanent. I'm not that kind of artist. I, I can't even begin to do it, so I need somebody. Like I said, it's too permanent to me. Because, of course, uh, I have not gotten a tattoo since February 28th, 2020. Wow. Which was also the last day I ever saw my friend Jeff. Um... Uh, about a week or so after that, we started hearing rumblings about you know, closing schools and essential businesses. And uh, we called him and said, hey, can we slip in one more tattoo before everything gets shut down? And he didn't think it was a good idea. And so that was the end of what was a 79-month tattoo streak. And uh, like I said, even though I talked to him on the phone a few times before his death, the last time I ever saw him. I'm very sorry. Not, I don't want to make this a model in remembrance of my friend, I, but I, I did want to pay tribute to him because of it were not for him, I would not have all these tattoos. Yes. Uh, I guess we should start at the beginning. Of course, we've covered this a bit because we did do an episode, Requiem for a Tattoo. Mm -hmm. We talked about how I covered up one of my early tattoos. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure we told the origin story there, but I feel like we should revisit it at least a bit. All right. Uh, this was the late summer 2013, and I wanted to... Summer 2013? Yes, Alex. Same year we started the podcast. Same year I lost my best friend. I thought you were about to say same year I lost my virginity. <laughs> no, I was referring to a dog. Oh, wow. That, that's, your grandmother's died. I st okay, <laughs> one of my best friends that I've lost. You, you've, you've had, okay. Yes, oh, I've, I've, I've lost. Dog. I've lost both my grandparents and various pets. See, why don't you get it, when you had the chance, mm. why not get a tribute tattoo to your, your late canine pal? Uh, the one tattoo was enough, honestly. I, uh, I, I'm a sensitive bitch. I don't need more. We'll get she there, though. We'll get there, though. This, this, this is a journey, and every journey should begin at the beginning. Um, Nothing to do with tattoos. Love these shoes. <laughs> get some shoes tattooed on you. <laughs> just, just get your feet tattooed. I mean, I have my feet tattooed, but not overall, but you can just get your feet completely colored in and be like, I got shoes. <laughs> Each of your shoes. feet has a cactus that Gabba and I drew. Yes, but we're, we're going we're getting out of, that. We're I going know, out of I know, order. Let, let, let's at least, let's at least okay, get the beginning cover. Okay, let's lay a foundation. First tattoo section, let's go. It's late summer 2013. 
I wanted to show my wife, Casey, and a friend of mine how much they meant to me. So I came up with a brilliant idea to get their names tattooed on me. No, Casey, don't, don't get names tattooed on you. I, I've got a lot of names tattooed That's on fact. me. That's uh, fact. Casey does as well. Nice. All of our names, at least. Um, she had a tattoo design in mind for years that she wanted to get. And I sort of vacillated back and forth like, yeah, I'd like to get a tattoo someday. I, I had a couple ideas in mind. In fact, the two tattoos... I thought for the longest time I would get. I have since gotten, although not exactly in the same place. I used to think I'd get flowers tattooed on my arm one day. I, I didn't think I would have as many tattoos as I do. But anyway, back to the beginning. So we actually paid for these tattoos with the money from selling a car that my aunt gave us. Because the car was not in very good uh, condition. Uh -huh. As it turns out, mechanically it needed a lot of work and it just wasn't really worth putting the money into it. So we decided to scrap it. Uh -huh. And we took that money and got something much better than a car tattoos <laughs> um yeah i got the two names tattooed on my wrist that was the beginning of my tattoo career your mother got her big flower tattoo with, with uh y'all's names and my name in it it has, nice. it has birth dates too nice. and mine and daddy's wedding anniversary damn this was yep, 2013 though from. It, so was it, does, 2013. it doesn't include the tiniest one no johnny's not on he the no he's later on she has his birthday and his footprint tattooed on him. Um, nice. He got his old tattoo. But yeah, so we didn't. I said we didn't know Jeff ahead of time. Mm -hmm. We didn't know any tattoo artists personally. We, there's a lot of tattoo shops near where we live, but we knew nothing of their reputation or anything else. And basically, we were just looking for a price quote. Yeah. Because we had so much money we could put towards, so we wanted to find some place we could get it done. And your mom, just uh, Casey, I should say, not just your mom. That sounds weird, <laughs> I guess. She is now the internet's mother. <laughs> that's a lot of responsibility. I, I, I wouldn't put that on. <laughs> I don't know that I want to claim everybody that's on the internet. But she started calling tattoo shops, and I think Jeff was the third one she called, and he was the first one that actually was willing to give her at least a general estimate on the phone. Mm -hmm. So that's who we went with. Nice. And, and a couple hours later, we went up to a shop to discuss the designs and set up the appointment for the very next day. Nice. And thus it all began. And, and I do remember having the fleeting feeling of, now look, I have a fairly high pain threshold. I can handle pain. I don't mm -hmm. necessarily enjoy it outside of, you know, sex. But no, seriously, the, I mean, I can take pain, but I'm not necessarily looking for it uh -huh. all the time. But I, I did. At, at that point in time, he wasn't looking for, for, for just For just a moment, I'm sitting there in the chair, probably after he's put the stencil on me and getting ready to go. And I'm thinking like, what if I can't take this? What if this really sucks and I need to just bounce up out of the chair? This... I'm kind of committed at this point, but I'm not sure. But it, it went over totally fine. It was like, nah, it was nothing. And I mean, I've, I've had varying degrees of, of pain and, and distress with different tattoos, which we'll talk about. But I described it at the time because I decided to go first. Mm -hmm. And I described it to Casey at the time. Is it, it feels like being cut by a razor blade. Which sounds like which a, a, doesn't a, a horrific good. description. But the truth is, I mean, razor blades are generally so sharp. If you get cut by one, it's not... It, it's not so much an instantaneous major pain, it's more of a stinging feeling. I mean, depending on how I deep it is and where it happens. I know one time I was cut by one you. and I hated it. But, uh, and Jeff agreed with me that that was a fairly apropos description of the sensation. Oh, God. But so I got my first two and then Casey sat down and got hers. Do you want to reflect on, you didn't have a chance to reflect on your first tattoo on the show. You weren't on the rec room for a tattoo. No, I mean, it's not exactly what my design was supposed to be originally. Is it better than... It was supposed to well, be. Well, the idea she had... It is a lot bigger. Je Jeff thought it was going to be too busy and not necessarily work. Yeah, the way my she original was kind of like so. a tulip type uh -huh. flower with with flower petals kind of falling off uh -huh. the flower with y'all's names and date of births on it. And I'll whatnot. try to share some, some tattoo images but, on our socials. Yeah, it, it couldn't exactly drops. go out to that. So it's just one big flower. It's a nice with, tattoo. It's a really solid piece. It's one of my favorites of Casey's tattoos. And, you know, it has your name first. Does it actually say Alexis? Yes. Okay, with your date of birth under it. And unfortunately, your date now that it's so much older, your date of birth is kind of small and yeah, cause, it's cause not as... Life advice for Legible. tattoos, if you're going to get writing or anything, or don't get something super small. The bigger it is, the better, because that ink will spread over time. But that's on the it, one side totally of the It's still totally legible, yeah. but it's just not as legible and then as it I was 10 years ago. Yeah. I have Dylan's name on the top. I mean, overall, the tattoo is held whatever, with really his well. it, It's a really well done piece and looks very nice. And then a person I thought of as my sister, and in a way my own child for the longest time. Her name's tattooed on me. And then, like, down there, it has Casey and Maddie with our wedding anniversary. And 
In my favorite colors, of course, turquoise and purple. Everything. Nice. Just yeah. like the shoes you mentioned. Everything needs to be turquoise and purple. My two favorite colors. I'm, I'm Believe it or not, when I went into this and whatnot, I said, I'm going to go big or go home. It's probably going to be the only tattoo I ever get. And I don't care how much it hurts. I'm going to sit in the chair and make sure it gets done because it's the only tattoo I've wanted forever. It wasn't that bad. And no, no it, it was, wasn't. It, Believe it, it probably not, was being, not one of your most painful tattoos. You know, tattoos. my first and only and probably you forever just only. <laughs> she had really like only. No, hold on. Weapons. I just want to say, referring to the pain and stuff, the razor blade thing is accurate, except this is like a prolonged situation believe it or not like it just keeps going being a diabetic that's kind of what it reminded me of is getting poked with a bunch of needles at one that's time really what it is. What it is. but being a, like for the people out there that may be a diabetic that go through multiple shots a day that's really what it feels like in a part of your body that you have it really like when you get the flu shot or something maybe um, but it really wasn't that bad. Believe it or not, the more tattoos over time that I got, it became more painful. And that's one yeah. of the reasons I, I stopped getting tattooed is because... As you know. frequently. You got a tattoo on that last occasion. We got our matching Eeyore tattoos was the yeah. last tattoos we got. Was the, oh, those were the very last ones mm -hmm. we got? And, and we had actually we actually got tattooed in January of that year as well. You, you didn't get tattooed every month like I did. Yeah. You would get tattooed occasionally when the mood struck. Yeah, but that's what kind of put me off of getting tattooed as much as I was is because it just seemed like it was starting to get more painful the more tattoos I got. Yeah, I think as we go on, we'll talk about some of our more painful experiences and more interesting experiences, but I kind of still want to go chronologically a little bit. Yeah, a little um, bit. We left that first session. Uh, I, you know, I assured you, I said, hey, I'm definitely going to be back. I didn't have any immediate plans to come back or knew when or what I was going to get, but I was like, I'm definitely going to be back. Casey was a little more noncommittal. Um the plan, I think, originally was for me to get y'all's names tattooed on me as my second set of tattoos. Mm -hmm. But fate kind of intervened, and a little less than a month later, that friend that I'd gotten a tattoo for, I felt like they broke a promise to me, and I had the idea of, hey, pro the word promises, broken, would be a cool tattoo. And uh, so that's why I ended up you know, going up to Jeff and having him design, and I got that on the inside of my forearm. And this is still my favorite tattoo of all time. It's... Mm -hmm. I'm sure somebody else has a tattoo of Broken Promises, but when I looked around a bit, I didn't see any design like this. I saw a couple that were more horizontal mm -hmm. style, and, and mine is laid out, or I'm sorry, vertical. Mine's, you know, just horizontal up my forearm. Yeah. And it's not a direct copy of anybody's tattoo. It was an original idea that was designed by my tattoo artist. And this, more so than any tattoo, including the first tattoos I got, was the one that really kicked off me being such an ink junkie and wanting to get tattooed so regularly. Um, nice. That was, like I said, almost exactly one month to the day of my first tattoos it was september 10th 2013 and and i guess technically it was a tattoo that began the monthly streak because i mean one month is not a streak you need at yeah. least two for it to be a streak so with me getting tattooed in september after getting tattooed in october that began the the legendary 79 month streak i actually applied to the guinness book of world records to see if i could get acknowledged for having the longest monthly tattoo streak but i i, I never heard back from so i think i may have messed something up in the application and then once the pandemic hit and I stopped getting tattooed, yeah. it kind of seemed irrelevant. I'm sorry. But that that was number two. And then exactly one week later, I was back in the shop, finally getting y'all's names on me. I'm sure Jeff was thrilled. He's like, please just keep coming back. Well, yeah. I mean, he always... At first, we, he we, wasn't we, sure if it was going to be like a... We, we were the most consistent clients he had. Like, he had clients who would come back fairly regularly once a year, every so often. But, I mean, he never had anybody that came back month after month. Nice. We, we were the clients. And, I mean, you know, to be fair, he was really good on his pricing with us, which is part of the reason we continued going before we really built up our friendship with him. Yeah. And then at that point, just the level of trust and, 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 and comfort we had going there precluded us from ever going anywhere else. So, at what point did y'all start taking food to him? Because <laughs> I remember y'all used to take up some food for him. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll get there. I just want to say that I got the uh, y'all's names added to my arm along with, Casey's and my friends and I got an animal for each one of y'all. I got I got an owl from my former friend and I got a, a dolphin for Casey, a turtle for you, and, and, and kind of a drunk looking monkey. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I thought it was a monkey for Gaba. But while while we were there, Casey saw a tattoo on the wall. You know the the, the so called flash the art that tattoo mm -hmm. artists had that you can just pick out and get just basically like it is. Or of course they can always customize it. Mm -hmm. Of a pair of dolphins sort of smooching and making like a heart. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, decided she liked that. I think she, I don't think she got it in turquoise and purple. I don't think those were the colors on the flash. I think she she uh, 
made <laughs> made that amendment, and Jeff put his own well, little flair on the coloring because he, he liked to work with like some negative space in his coloring. Yeah. So so he added that, but so yeah, the, so we were. I was there to get the names and the animals tattooed on me on September seventeenth. The very next day, September eighteenth, we were back for your mother to get a dolphin's <laughs> tattoo. Uh, while we were there, I showed Jeff a design that I'd found online, which which is actually a. Um, a Salvador Dali painting. Yes. A soldier be warned or soldier beware, whatever you have it. it it's a, a silhouette of a skull, but if you focus on it, it's actually two women standing underneath a light. And I think it was supposed to be his warning for soldiers who would go out and mess around and get venereal disease or what have you. I didn't know it was a Dali painting at the time. I just knew it was a cool image. And I brought up Jeff and said, hey, what would you charge for this? And he was like, and, and like I said, to be fair, he was already giving us good prices. Mm-hmm. But but also, um, and, and over the years, he would give us even better prices, you know, the sort of friend prices. But even with this one, he was like, because I really want to do it, I'm going to give you a really good price on it. And so we're like, that, let's do it. And I think we actually sold some of our textbooks. <laughs> Not ones we were currently using. Yeah. But sell a car, sell some textbooks. College textbooks are expensive. They and are. if you can resell them for a decent price, that's a good way to recoup some of your money. So we had some textbooks we needed to unload anyway. So I think that's how we paid for it. But nevertheless... Uh, one day after your mother got her dolphin tattoos, I was back in there getting my largest tattoo at the time. I think that's where the conversation of my tattoo came up, too. My big uh, Skull Girls tattoo. And, and this, as a side note, I believe that tattoo, which marked our third straight day of getting tattooed collectively, yeah. was, was the birth of my little uh, cuddle pillow, Cuddly. <laughs> because I, at home that night, I wanted some place to rest my arm while I was watching TV with Casey. And nice. that was the pillow that I chose, and that sort of became my little... Not, I don't have any plushies that I cuddle with or anything, but yeah. I have my cuddle pillow. So I think it was thanks to that tattoo. Um, and I'm going to say the tattoo, for being my biggest tattoo, e- easily as big as Casey's flower tattoo, it didn't really hurt that much, any more so than any other tattoo. The thing that was really rough about it is after a while, you know, when, when you're getting tattooed, there's going to be excess ink on your arm and sometimes some blood, and the tattoo also wipe it off. Yeah. After a while, the wiping just got rough. Like yeah. the, my arm was sore, and the wiping was. Like, oh god! You it was like, could you like again? wet it just a little bit? The tattooing itself didn't give really some hurt the that lubrication. Oh, up closer to my shoulder, that was probably the, the rougher part, and then down lower toward the elbow. Yeah. In the middle, it wasn't nearly as bad. Um, I do have like some stretch marks on my arm, and those can sometimes be a little tender for the tattoo. But overall, it, it was not a bad experience by any means. It, I wouldn't even put it in the top ten of my most painful tattoos, even for being one of my biggest tattoos. Interesting. Um, but that was like we really marked ourselves as we're going to be doing this for a while. And that, and that first, not even year, but that, that first calendar year, those first few months of getting tattooed from August 2013 through December 2013, I mean, that's when we were really hitting it hard, you know, because like I said, we, we did... Uh, the three consecutive dates in September. Then we were back for we were only back for one in October. But to be fair, we both got two fairly large tattoos. So we spent basically the whole day up there getting tattooed. We we got our matching uh, puzzle hearts, yeah. which may or may not be an autism symbol. Oh, I've no. learned in subsequent years, but it just looked like a cool heart. And I have like her color puzzle piece in the middle of mine. She has my color puzzle piece in the middle of hers. Nice. And then I have this big tattoo of these. Now, the original Flash was actually sort of like a devil or an angel uh-huh. embracing, and it was a dude and, and, and a girl, and I had Jeff change into two girls. It was like a devil girl and an angel girl. Nice. And then, uh, what did you get that day, Casey? You got, oh, yeah, you got your, your matching tattoo. Not matching tattoo, but a similar no, tattoo from and the... And it, uh, it came from when Jeff was doing this tattoo on Daddy. The Dolly painting. Je- Jeff turned around and said something about he's always wanted to do this tattoo on somebody, yeah, it's a but he never print. had a canvas. It's a well-known print called All is Vanity which is yeah. a, a woman, like a sort of Victorian so a woman sitting in a mirror. But if you look at it, it's also like the silhouette of a skull. Yeah, so at that time when he was saying that, and he said, but he could never get anybody, you know, a canvas for it and whatnot. I said, well, here's a free arm. So when I did get the tattoo this... tattoo was not free. But, but, but <laughs> no, he, he gave me a great discount. He charged discount the same price that he did for my Dolly tattoo. So. Yeah. He gave me a discount because he really wanted to do yeah. it. Interestingly enough... Your grandmother had a print of all his vanity. It's still down in the basement now. And it may well have hung in the house when I was a child. And I just, it was just part of the art that was on the wall. And I never really focused on it. Nice. (laughs) But I didn't even remember that or know that she had at the time. And even when she moved in with us, I didn't even notice that it was part of the collection that came. We just found it fairly recently when we were cleaning up the basement. Nice. Uh, But that was our only October. Part of it, too, I, I had cut my arm and I had it in. Not a major infection, but enough that I had to get it taken care of. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that prolonged 
are getting our, our October tattoos that month. But then November, we really hit it. We were there on the 2nd, the 7th, the 13th, and the 20th. So the second, five days later, and then six days after that, and then a week after that. So like every week. So we were Once really hitting it then. The Ka- Casey was o- only joining me for two of those. Uh, on the second, that's when she got her behind tattoo. I almost fell asleep in the tattoo chair with that one. So if you're thinking about it, and, and I want to point out, she has a real butt tattoo. It is flat on her butt cheek. It's not up on her hip and just near her butt. I see a lot of people, they've got like on their upper hip and it's sort of right adjacent to their butt. It's like, <laughs> I got a butt tattoo. No, you don't. You have a hip tattoo. Casey has a legitimate butt tattoo. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. I've seen a lot of butt tattoos too, but I've just seen a lot of tattoos passing for butt tattoos that aren't really butt tattoos. Mm-hmm. Interestingly enough, I have a tattoo of Casey's butt on my leg it's like one of those it's the heart and it's got her butt inside of it and it includes her heart tattoo on her butt on the tattoo of her wait, butt wait, wait. and the heart so you have on my a leg. tattoo on a tat uh, yeah yeah i have a, a heart, tattoo on a tattoo on i have a, tattoo, a heart tattoo yes. that includes a tattoo inside of it nice I, i'm i'm really happy with that i have a lot of heart tattooed on me i mean i don't think i have the most hearts i think i have more skulls than anything although i was thinking about it. i may have more words tattooed on me than i can show else. you have more skulls on you well, but look at all the different phrases I have tattooed on me. I, I, I do like lettering and phrasing on me, so I, I'm not sure. That's why I wanted you guys to count it up and inventory it. Maybe we'll do it before this podcast drops so I can include the actual list on our socials. Hi. Um, you may not have the most individual skulls, but you don't have the most total skulls. So, so in November, like what tattoo. tattoos did we get besides my yeah, butt hold, hold on tattoo? I mean, if you went individual letters, it would definitely be letters. I think words might out-trump skulls, but skulls are definitely one or two with hearts coming in a solid three because I even have... I have heart tattoos, and then I have tattoos with hearts in them. Like, I have a razor blade with a heart in it on my arm. I have a spider on my shoulder that has a, a heart in it. I have a sugar skull that has multiple hearts in it. I have kissing cherubs that have a, a heart on on the uh, female cherub's butt. Yeah, but you got an awful lot of skulls on oh, your no, back. Oh, no, no. I'm sure skulls would beat out hearts because of that big pile of skulls on my back. <laughs> I'm just saying I think words might actually uh, beat out skulls, but we'd have to count yeah. to be sure. But anyway, back to November 2013, uh, when you got your, your your fanny tattoo, I got my dad's initials tattooed on me and actually uh, had his ashes put in the tattoo, which is something that Jeff had suggested. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that, let's do that. Um, and I would continue that with the uh, shooting star I got above him. And actually, uh, the owl tattoo that I originally got from my friend that was covered up, which we talked about on the Requiem for a Tattoo episode, I got that owl put back on the tree that I have tattooed on my ribs and my dad's ashes are in that owl as well just because I was getting the shooting star at the time so I was like yeah we just put them all in and then I would get uh, my mom's ashes and several of the tattoos I got for her after she passed away like the spider and the little heart I have inside my spider web and the 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 so-called mom bat which is a bat that spells mom that Alex drew for me facts and that that was like that was a Saturday and we were just bored (laughs) <laughs> and I'm like, you know, I have anything else to do. Why don't you call Jeff, see if he's got... <laughs> anything. Just, well, you no, have so much money from selling your textbooks. At, at the time, I don't know if this was textbook money. I don't this, know, this, Lisa. This, this was just mad money. But at the time, he was working on another design for me that I'd brought up probably at the end of October when we got tattooed. And we, we called him up and was like, well, let's see if he's got... And he didn't have that done yet. He was like, there's something else you're going to say. Well, what, can we just do my dad's initials? And and he, he actually suggested to, to Casey, you know, what about the butt tattoo y'all were talking about? So... We got those that day, and then five days later, we were back in, and I got the, the uh, aforementioned design. It's the word things, but it's like falling apart, so it's things fall apart. So definitely in the same vein as, as the Broken Promises tattoo. Uh, and Casey got her, her uh, POW MIA tribute tattoo on her other shoulder that day. Just the standard, you know, POW MIA yeah. flag. Uh, but my dog, it has dog tags on it. POW, of course, is a prisoner of war, and MIA is missing in action. And yes, yeah, she got dog tags on it that say, um, that it doesn't have any specific names. It says grandpa, dad, brother, and uncle for her family members that were in the military. armed forces. I just always say military. I don't know why I say armed forces. I think it actually says around it, Army, Navy, Marines. Does it not? I don't have my glasses. It does. Okay, yeah, I added the four branches Main branches of the military onto it. Yeah, you had Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and it says you are not forgotten on the outside too, which is a little more. That's normally in the flag, but was it? Yeah, it's normally in the the flag, but we didn't have room because it was going to be so small. Um, and then yeah, a, a week, technically six days after that. 
Probably because I was bored again. <laughs> and I was like, let's go to Jeff. Let's get a tattoo. That's when I got my but kissing. I'm bored. Let's go get coffee when you're bored. Let's go get tattoos. That's when I got my kissing cherubs on my calf, which was just more flashy. He had just a little boy cherub and a little girl cherub, but she had a, a little... Little red heart tattoo on her butt, which I thought was cute. And of course, Casey had a heart tattoo on her mm-hmm. butt by then. So that's uh, it was one of my favorite tattoos. I don't know if I can say top 10 at this point because I've got 131, but it, it would definitely make the top half at, at worst. Nice. And then a week later, uh, just before Thanksgiving that year, I got my Hope and Trust Are Dead tattoo, which is a pair of gravestones, one with the word hope on it, one with the word trust on it. So continuing with the. Uh, Those are pretty neat designs. Continuing with the, uh, you know, the peppy sort of tattoos, the happy tattoos. <laughs> totally. For, for a while, I was like, my uh, right arm is like the dark arm. It's got the hope and trust are dead, things fall apart. It's got broken promises. It's got the skull girls, the razor blade. A sad rain, man. It's got uh, being alive equals being in pain on it. And, yeah, and, it's and, the depression guy on it. And, and it's also, um, it's all <laughs> black and gray except for some red. And then the other arm has more color on it. It's got, like, <laughs> my wife and kids' names on it. It's got, you know... The sugar skull, which, you know, I, I, not necessarily a happy thing, but it's not a sad thing either. So I know, yeah. it, I know, I know it relates to it's a bit Dia's de los more to you know the Day of the Dead, but I mean it's not necessarily considered a bad thing. And it's got you know Dylan's dinosaur and the spider web, and I mean it's all sort of merged together over the years because I got I had to put stuff in where I had space, but there was a little bit of theming going on at the you. beginning. What's that? Would you ever get Zilla tattooed on you if you got tattoos again? Yeah. Nice. I would absolutely get more of your art tattooed on me. I have a lot of it tattooed on me already. Yes, yes um, you do. But at this point, with pandemic issues still a concern to me, and the fact that Jeff's no longer with us, I don't know how much more I'm ever going to get tattooed, unfortunately. That I don't know either, but perhaps one day. Um, but back to late fall, early winter 2013, um, i say two weeks later, so December 4th, so we're beginning our, uh, what's that, four months? August, September, October, November, December, that's the fifth month. So our fifth straight month of getting tattooed. Uh, I would get my other big shoulder tattoo, which is uh, Jack and Sally. Yes. From The Nightmare Before Christmas. And I also got my broken heart, which was my first hand tattoo, which I remember Jeff at the time was like, you know, get ready for some pain. But it wasn't that bad. The, the two hand tattoos really weren't that bad. I I'm was, surprised. Like, I imagine that would hurt in general, but you also have very, very thin hands. Yes, yeah, very bony hands. Yeah. I will say, of the tattoos I'd gotten to this point... The most painful one was probably the big devil and angel girl on my leg. And it's not that it was terrible, and I don't know why, because my other calf tattoos weren't necessarily that bad, but that one that one got a little rough. And not not just like the other big skull tattoo where the wiping got it, the actual tattooing was a little sore. And that that's the funny thing about tattoos, is like from person to person and even from place to place on your body, they it doesn't all feel the same. And even there's no real rhyme or reason to it that you can tell because I've had gotten both my hands tattooed. And they were both fine. I've gotten all my fingers tattooed, and some of them were worse than others, but they were okay. I've gotten both my feet tattooed, and one of my feet, I felt almost nothing. And it, the other foot, actually, the other foot wasn't that bad. It was it was rough, but it was one of the worst tattoos post-tattoo of all my tattoos. Mm-hmm. In the healing process, I really got worried that it got infected because my foot bothered me so much for a couple of days. But it was just the healing process. But you just never know what's going to be that painful. But like I say, to this point that we're up to, with the Jack and Sally and the broken heart on the back of my hand, and and I specifically had it broken, not in the dead center, but off to the side, playing off the, uh, it's not the verb. What's the band that does break even? Anybody uh, know off the top of their head? Is it the script? Yeah, I knew it was a sing. I knew it was a the something. I'm not. I'm not. I, I'm pretty sure you're right, but they did that song "Break Even." And it was kind of in my head at the time, and I was like, when a heart breaks, it doesn't break even. So I had it broken on the side. Okay, well, it is the script. And Jeff said that was fairly unique for him that he hadn't really done one like that. The name "Broken Hearts" he had done had been more uniform in the break. Nice. Um, don't get me wrong. I don't have any notions that all my tattoos are uber original, but some of them, you know, are fairly original to me and my artists still. Um, you know, if I don't know somebody else has done it, it could still be original, you know. Like I like I joked to Dylan that I invented speed running. Which I didn't, <laughs> but when I was a kid we would do a thing where we played through Super Mario Bros, trying to get through the levels as fast as we could and not doing as much as you would do if you were really taking your time and playing it. And I and, and I called it world running at the time. So I mean to me that was original. Other people would go on to do it and were probably doing it at the time, but i wasn't doing it because of somebody else's influence. I was doing it because you know, that's what I thought was cool. And so that's some of my tattoos some of my tattoos are straight up copies of other people's Blood tattoos. Some of my tattoos are, are flash, which means other people probably have them. And some of them are just original ideas, at mm-hmm. least in as much as I'd never seen one like it, and that's what some I chose of it to get. Is my artwork. Um 
Continuing on December, yeah, December was another month where we hit it almost every week. We were there on the fourth, the eleventh, and then the eighteenth. And obviously, we took the next week off because that would have been Christmas Day. But um, oh, we never got tattooed on New Year's Eve. I'm so sorry. After we, we never got tattooed on New Year's Eve, but I have been tattooed on every single day of the month. I've been tattooed on the first day of the month all the way through the thirty first day of the month. Not wow. all in one month. Yeah, no, no, no I no, understand, but, hit, but like hit, over I've time, hit every yeah. day of the I've hit every month, obviously, because I've had a monthly wow. streak for years. So um, technically, you've, in a way, been tattooed every day of the year. In I, a way. I, um, yeah, I, I didn't, I haven't hit every single day of the year. I've yeah, no, number. but you, yeah, I've you hit every, every number and every month. month. Yeah. And I've hit every day of the week, obviously. Yeah. Even Sunday, which was kind of an accomplishment because Jeff was technically closed on Sundays. <laughs> but, I, but, but we did end up there on a Sunday. I think twice we were there on <clears> Sunday for whatever reason, either because the date was super important to mm-hmm. me or because it just worked out that Jeff was available to do it for me. Um, yeah, I, I joked at times, too, that I want to go up there and get tattooed every day of a month. Like, just something little, maybe a little touch-up on a tattoo, a little addition, something very small. But if we could, that would have been awesome. That would have been my, my, my been dream for something. getting tattooed. But it wasn't to be. Um, but we wrapped up 2013, like I say, on uh, the 4th, I got the Jack and Sally tattoo and the Broken Heart. On the 11th, I got my big owl that's on my calf, which which is a straight-up copy of somebody else's tattoo. I'm not going to lie. It's a tattoo I found online, and I didn't realize that was poor etiquette to get somebody else's tattoo at the time. And Jeff was fine doing it, so uh, he actually put on his business card. He was so proud of this <laughs> tattoo, and, and I was really nice. proud to be on the business card. Um, and I got my other hand tattooed with, a, with a, a heart pennant that was aping the pennant that I had given Casey as an early Christmas present that year. Very nice. And then together we finished up the year on December 18th. I got uh, my first neck tattoo, which was without a doubt the most painful tattoo I had had up to that time. Still probably one of the top five most painful tattoos I've gotten. I've gotten other neck tattoos and they weren't quite as bad, but that one was a killer. I had to just grip my teeth and think happy thoughts. I had to go gabba gabba mode. Think happy thoughts. Happy Getting a thoughts. tattoo. Thinking about kids' songs. Um, And Casey actually joined me again to get tattooed. So I guess technically... Did Casey have a monthly streak? She did. She got tattooed in August. She got tattooed in September. She got tattooed in October, November, December, January. It would be February 2014 before she would break her streak. So she would have August, September, October, November, December, January. She had a six-month streak going on at one point. Nice. Uh, She finished that 2013 getting her in loving memory tattoo. It's a precious moment. A pair of precious moments, angels on a cloud, and just says in loving memory. She wanted to be a tribute to different people she'd lost in her life, mm-hmm. but instead of just trying to list everybody to work them onto a tattoo, she got a, a more general tattoo. Nice. It would have taken up my whole leg plus some. If I listed everybody I've ever lost in my life, that meant something to me. My leg wants to stay here. That, that hook. Sorry. So that was our first five months, and, and you know, the, the, the real in-the-zone streak that really kicked everything off. Yeah. From there, like I said, I would go on to get tattooed for... 79 months straight with all manner of different tattoos. There were some months where I would just get in right at the deadline. Like even um, 2014, I got tattooed on February 28th. So, you know, if Jeff had gotten sick, if I had gotten sick, if something had come up, I'd, you know, miss the streak there, but we still got it in. And like I said, Casey would be a much more infrequent tattoo receiver, but she would definitely join me uh on some occasions. She was there at the tattoo shop with me almost every time. I only got tattooed without her there like maybe twice. Interesting. One of them was a surprise tattoo when I got our uh, Zodiac signs tattooed on our, what we call our anniversary, which is the anniversary of us getting together, not technically our wedding anniversary. Mm-hmm. And uh, I must have like maybe one other time I was up there. But that one she didn't even, I don't even know if she knew I was getting tattooed that day. That one I had set up all by myself as a surprise to her. Normally, Casey would make the call for us to set up the tattoos because I hate fucking talking on the phone. I know. Jeff would turn around. Anytime he'd see our number popped up, and I, he'd say, hello, custom touch, or what do you want? <laughs> and I'd say, it's me, Jeff. He'd be like, what does he want this month, or what does he want this time? Yeah, Jeff could be a crotchety old bastard, but I love him. I mean, it was mostly in good fun. But uh, I, I'm not going to go through every single tattoo on this episode. That would take way yeah. too long um i wanted to hit the first stretch and i thought we talked about some of the high points i i, I, I yeah I, I feel like i monopolized <laughs> the conversation too are, what what are your, your some of your later tattoos are there anything you want to highlight or, or even the tattoos we've talked about or in general like what, what what's your favorite tattoo my favorite out of all my tattoos yeah i mean i'm i'm on my lighthouse promises is my number one your lighthouse came about in uh january 25th 
2013. That would be technically the end of your streak of tattoos. I don't know if, you know, you might have put a, a two-month streak together here or there. Yep, nope. My, uh, that was another piece of flash. That That's my favorite tattoo is that probably also my grandparents tattoos yeah, yeah. I mean my grandmother's is basic but it means it's a something very, it's a very cute little pig because yeah. your grandmother's really into pigs and then you have a silhouette of uh, an adult and a child fishing for you and your on grandfather pond, yep. on, on your back yeah you actually got your technically you got your back tattooed before I did but it's just your upper back just on your my shoulders. dragon I like my dragon yeah you got your dragon for my mom when she was uh, battling cancer before she passed away one of the, that might have been the last tattoos we got before she passed away. Yeah, I think it was. I had already gotten, like, I got a spider web on my elbow, which is kind of a cliche mm -hmm. tattoo, but I had her name put in it, and that was... I have to think of all my tattoos. Long before she passed away. Um, So then, yeah, when she was in the hospital, you got your dragon. And, and then I, my grandfather tattoo, that would be... The image of your grandfather. Yeah, the, the big in, in grandfather. The, the one portrait either one of us have. Yeah. Because, I mean, I love Jeff, and he did a fine job on that, but I I don't trust somebody to do a portrait. they got to be a <laughs> really acclaimed portrait artist, because it's just too easy to fuck up a portrait. So I never really wanted to do a portrait. Somebody once uh, wanted to commission me to draw a portrait for them to get as a tattoo. Well, part of it is, too, what am I going to get? I, I can't get all of y'all, uh, certainly by now, or even... Yeah. even, even Five months in, I was pretty well covered. So, I mean, it's like I didn't... And, and it's you like you gotten it on your back before you got your Grim Reaper. Y'all were with me, so it wasn't like I needed to do a tribute <laughs> to y'all or anything. But yeah, I definitely don't think I would get a portrait without very high recommendations of the artist. And then again, like I say, what would I even get? Mm -hmm. There's too many people that are important to me and, and yeah, hell, even too many people that I've lost to say, like, I need that portrait. Am I going to get my mom and my dad and... I do have a, a, not really a portrait, but I have a little tribute to my dead hedgehog. It, it's just a picture of a hedgehog I found on a notebook in Michael's. Is that the yeah. one over by Target? Yeah. yeah. Hey, don't you have one of uh, Jello? I do, but it, for my hedgehog, he was named Maurice. You know, some people mm -hmm. call him the space cowboy. Some people call him the gangster of love. So I have those lyrics along with, with the picture on it. That was actually the only tattoo I got for free. That was a Christmas present from Jeff the year I got it. Mm -hmm. 2018. Yeah, she gave that to me uh, gratis. He never technically gave me a tattoo for my birthday. He did give me a birthday present one year. He would oftentimes give me some... People would apparently give him a lot of stuff with, like, Grim Reapers and skulls and stuff, and when he mm -hmm. felt like he had too much, he would pass it along to us. Like, the skull sitting over there that I always decorate for Christmas is one of them, and, and that uh, that uh, skeleton hand snow globe with the Grim Reaper, and he gave yeah. that to me as a birthday present one year. So I never technically got a tattoo as a present, but I, but I did get that... Um, Sometimes it would, especially when we bring him food, we'd get like a, a discount on the things. Because mm -hmm. as you said, we did start a tradition of bringing him food every time we would come. And I, I think that started the first, I don't think it actually started with a tattoo appointment. I think we took him Thanksgiving dinner in 2013. Yeah. Because I don't think it would have been, I know it was Thanksgiving that we started with. And I don't think it would have been as late as the following Thanksgiving. But I think it was during that first real heady stretch of tattoos. We brought him Thanksgiving dinner, and then, and then we would start bringing things when, when we'd cook something really interesting that we wanted to share. And like one time, we we picked up Roly Polies uh, from Roly Poly sandwiches for dinner, and we got him some too. Yeah, because we were getting tattooed. That was the day I got my little uh, my little rainy day guy that your mom calls the depression guy. He does. If anybody has seen the depression commercial, you'll know my oh, husband's man. tattoo. That Jeff's. It's not directly from that, but it is just an image I found online. And Jeff said that was one of his favorite little tattoos that he did on me. Um, but yeah, it, it, got, like, it got to the what point. What is it, Zoloft or something, I think? Yeah, maybe, but that's not oh, yeah. where this image is from. It may be similar, <laughs> but it did get to the point where like every time we would, we would go to the tattoo shop, I'd have to have something for Jeff. I'd either bring him the dinner that we were, some of the dinner we were having that night if it was pre-cooked or maybe the, the, the dinner from the night before. Sometimes I'd even just whip something up special for him just for that day because I felt like I got to bring some kind of meal up there because that just did sort of became a thing. I think so. It's quite possible. It's not something I make often, but I have made it. He, he has brought Jeff just about anything and everything. And like I said, he especially made Jeff's certain things and whatnot. I have made Jeff stuff too and he'd be like, oh, that was really good. Or I've never had that. What was that called again? As a matter of fact, uh, I guess Jeff's daughter still has one of our casserole dishes. Because <laughs> the last time we got tattooed back in February 2020, I brought him food in a casserole dish and I've never been back up there to get it back. Yeah, didn't you pandemic. bake him like mac and cheese? My, some kind of casserole probably, like when we make with the egg noodles. Maybe. I, I know I you based him like, a, a, a mac I, well, and cheese I wouldn't one have, time. I wouldn't have just brought mac and cheese. 
No, you brought other stuff too. I but could I think have, but I know that one. We had this white casserole dish and placed some flowery filigree around it and a clear lid, and we don't have it anymore. And I'm pretty sure that's where it is. <laughs> Might be. So uh, who knows now? But uh, despite all the good food we brought in, that did not lessen the pain of some of the tattoos. <laughs> like that. But that's just that's just part of the game. And like I say, it, and there's no real rhyme or reason to which ones hurt the most. I did notice that for me, the chest and the neck and my back were the worst. Um, mm-hmm. Without a doubt, my back piece was the worst. But it's it's my whole back. It's a big Grim Reaper on a pile of skulls that literally covers my whole back. So just by nature of being the biggest tattoo it was almost assuredly going to be the most painful. I think if I had gotten my entire chest done at one time, or maybe even like a whole wrap around my neck, and I don't have like a, I don't have a real on my throat tattoo. Some of my tattoos sort of lean into my throat, like the the, the vampire heart that you drew. But I don't have anything directly on my throat. But something like that, if I'd gotten a bigger piece in any of those areas, they may have competed with the back piece. And as it is, the ones I've got, they definitely hurt, but nothing's going to compare to getting my back done. Yeah, Daddy has, we have matching Hearts oh, that say forever on our chest. Yeah. And he says that was the most painful at that the time that it, he it got. Was definitely and I'm like, painful. what are you talking about? That that didn't <laughs> And I got the other side of my chest, I have the naughty girl that matches your mother's nice girl on her inner thigh. Mm-hmm. That was really painful. I have my collarbone mm-hmm. tattooed. I have a pair of pocket knives on my collarbone. Technically one of them's a cover up. I had the word alone tattooed, but just because you know there's no meat there, the ink kinda ran and it didn't look so good, so I ended up getting alone in another font on my yeah, arm yeah. and then I got a pair of pocket knives to cover that up and just to be symmetrical mm-hmm. pretty much the bony areas that, are... no this wasn't bad at all is what I was saying huh. my collarbones didn't hurt at all I've got my shins tattooed and they weren't so the bad the bony areas except for the collarbone at all I've got my feet tattooed and like I say they didn't I really enjoyed getting my feet tattooed that was one of the most I don't want to say pleasurable but I kind of dug the sensation now I have a cactus that you drew Dylan on yes. my left foot and I have cactus. a cactus that Alex drew or Lexi drew on my right foot. And the one that you drew is all black and white. It's just black ink. Yes. The one that Lexi drew is colored in. So I that, painted that. So that may have affected it. But the one that Lexi drew, it, it hurt a little more getting done. But also, like I say, in the days after, that was the worst tattoo as far as healing. Even more so than my back. I thought it was infected. Seriously, my foot was swollen. and I had a lot of trouble with that tattoo. But, I mean, it turned out fine. It's one of my favorite tattoos. You also drew a little cactus buddy to go with your cactus. On. That's tattooed on my big toe. Um, that was fine. All my fingers are tattooed. And, I mean, they hurt, but not like, oh, God, that was terrible. I couldn't do it again. So, again, I mean, those are real bony areas. That, that wasn't bad. I believe that cactus I drew, like, in one of my school notebooks at one point. I, uh, I've also, you also drew a little heart buddy that I have on my uh, left shin, Dylan. I, I actually a knife. In my notes, I called it an Undertale-inspired heart. So I don't know if that was your inspiration at the time or not, but that's I how no I have idea. it listed. Um, yeah, you drew a cool little sort of butcher knife or, or chef's knife that I have on my arm. Is that the extent of what you drew from me, or do I have something uh, else? I oh, I have your... Well, you didn't draw it, but I have what you call your logo, the little meh face. Yes, which, which is, is a slight parody of your A logo. companion to my logo, which I, which is the one tattoo I have that I actually drew on my hand and had Jeff just tattoo directly. So that's the one bit of my own art that I have on me. Um, your mother drew a teddy bear for me that I have... Right below my knee on my left leg. I will say neither one of my knees are tattooed, and that's that's the regret. I always wanted to get something, but I never had something in mind. Get knee pads tattooed on. <laughs> well, since Johnny came around, I thought about getting a Spider-Man face tattooed on my knee, but again, the pandemic never really allowed for it. So, yeah. Lexi, I apologize. I do not have any of your artwork. I don't have any of Dylan's artwork, and your daddy's never drawn anything for me. I don't have any <laughs> of Johnny's artwork, of course, because he came around so late. I do have his. I did finally get his name tattooed on me and a cute little elephant to go with the animals I have for you guys. But I have a bevy of your artwork, Alex. In fact, <laughs> the, the the melting heart that you drew, the sort of the companion to Dylan's heart, although, mm-hmm. I mean, it came first, so I guess Dylan's heart would technically be the companion for it. It's one of my top ten tattoos. It's one of my absolute favorites. That one and the cactus, either that year or the year before, sometime around then, I, y'all had gotten me, like, a giant sketchbook for my birthday, and I had, like, no... I, like, I just sat there, like, what do I draw in this? And I ended up sketching the uh, heart and mostly pencil and then I was watching YouTube and learned a bit about shading and drawing cactuses and stuff so I painted the cactus in it I am um, but I have some tattoos like the melting heart of yours and the cactus that you just drew independently and I said oh I want to get that tattooed on me um ninja bunny that I used to cover up my birthmark on my leg that I was always embarrassed by as a kid that was um, based on a shadow I saw in the neighbor's yard the marshmallow in the box is that the one that you had already drawn and then I kept calling a mushroom yes. and then you drew the mushroom for me <clears throat> yes um, 
I asked you to draw me a broken heart, but not like the one on my hand. This one was like stitched up, but coming apart and has a bandage over mm -hmm. it. Uh, that's another piece. Of, yeah, yeah, the vampire heart that I referenced is on my neck. This is just a red heart with oh, like some vampire teeth. Yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> if I can't see them, it's like I know yeah. it's there somewhere. That's one that you had just drawn. And I said I just want to get that. Um, yeah, I remember we had to adjust that. Don't you have a bunny on bit. you somewhere? I do. One of her early characters, Millie Tilly. Millie Tilly um, may or may not make a comeback one day. I also have some tattoos on me that Lexi drew on me in the tattoo shop. What is a peg? I got tattooed on or around her birthday in 2016. And I got, I think I got the 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 Cobra logo from mm -hmm. you know the GI Joe, their enemy. But I got several small pieces, including yeah the pear dog that she actually drew directly on me in the tattoo shop. Yeah, um, I think that originally came from a challenge uh, Dylan and I did on a, YouTube. A few years later, when Alex would get her fat uh, for her fast tattoo, it was fast because it's small. But her first tattoo, her only fast. tattoo at this point in 2019. <laughs> I got a matching one, and then she also drew a little lemon creature on my arm along with Paradog. I have to admit, I love Paradog. Lemon creature, maybe not. Oh, yeah, I think the lemon sure. creature, that's I a, yeah, have that's an a infinity physical. symbol on my... You do. You got the first infinity symbol, and then a few years later, I would get an infinity symbol with our names on it right after Johnny was born. And then the year after that, Alex and I would get matching infinity symbols on our ankles. <laughs> the, uh, the infinity symbols on our ankles are, is a reference to a book I really like. And they're all slightly different because you have a very bold, thick mm -hmm. infinity symbol. I have the one with our names inside of it, and then mine and Alex are just the you know the thin line Pretty infinity symbol, one, yeah. basically in the same spot on our ankles. Yeah, the book is uh, Secrets, Lies, and Algebra, and in it, one of the characters, she uses a red pen, but she draws it on her ankle, and, um, and she says... Something about how it goes on forever and everything always changes. But then I actually pulled up the book on my iPad. And later on in the week or whatever, friends come over. And they've seen it or whatever. And one draws a daisy on her ankle. And then the main character draws um, the symbol for absolute value on well, the other like friend's we ankle. Well, we need to get those. No, I'm good. So just she never said you were never getting another that, tattoo. I mean, I have pictures She's of done. you when you start getting You're like, oh. But I mean, come on. Was it really that bad? Yes. Wow. And that that's just the, about the simplest tattoo you could get. I don't remember. She's also afraid of needles. No, this one, it, um, her friend asks what the drawing doodle thing meant. And she says, infinity, it goes on forever and everything always changes. And then that friend draws the daisy. And then with the absolute value, she says she drew, drew it on her friend because they always make everything positive. I still think you should get some more. I, I am pretty sure I'm items. good. Dylan, you got to get a tattoo sometime, too. You're 18 yeah. now. Perhaps one day I'll consider something else, but I think for now I'm good. I mean, you guys right? You, get something, you want to get something like in memory of your grandmother or your grandfather. She might at one point. Personally, I'm tattooed literally from head to toe. I have Dylan's cactus tattooed on my toe. My feet are tattooed. My legs are tattooed. Uh, my ribs are tattooed, my back is tattooed, my arms are tattooed, my neck is tattooed. I even, I don't have the top of my head tattooed, but I do have... I, the I back have, of your head, kind of. I have the muffins from the uh, Astiff movie, Muffin Song, tattooed on my shoulders, and I have their catchphrase, I want to die, 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 that goes up the back of my head. And then on the sides, like right behind my ears, I have the number 42, because A, it was my 42nd straight month. I think it was my 42nd straight month getting tattooed. I don't think it was my 42nd tattoo. I think mm -hmm. it was past 42 by then. But also it's... Uh, Tribute to Jackie Robinson, who was number 42, and of course, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, where 42 stood for the answer to the life, uh, to life, the universe, and everything. Very nice. And I, th I have like, a, I have the puffer fish from Narwhal and Jelly. You have all of those. Narwhal and Jelly. Like I yeah, do, but they're exactly. scattered throughout my body. In fact, and their shark like buddy is, is the only shark I have tattooed on me. I always wanted to get like a wow. shark tattoo for Shark Week, but it just never quite worked out. So that's the only shark I ever got on me. But shark. yeah, I have the little puffer fish buddy who's I up love those on the lower part of my head. So like I, I, my entire body is not covered in tattoos. I don't have my genitals tattooed. I don't. I don't have my butt tattooed because just hygienically, I would feel uncomfortable. Like I gotta sit on the toilet seat, you know. <laughs> but uh, I am still literally tattooed from head to toe is something I'm proud of. Very nice. I, uh, what, what about a tattoo with a spider, but the big abdomen part thing is made to look like a record? Interesting. I have I have a jumping spider tattooed on my arm, much larger yes. than any real life jumping spider. Yes. I like this image because it had a little I, uh, heart on its on I would its like to end. not see a spider that large. Me least... and Marcus have matching tattoos too. Nice. Yeah, so do I. It's the same owl that I have. 
Yeah. Just different places it's, it's, or whatever. But, well, the original well, Flash had the yeah. owl, well, it's different places, and the original Flash had the owl sitting in a moon, and they got the moon, and yeah. mine, and mine, mine was just solo on my arm. I got it covered up, and then I had it put back in the tree that I have tattooed in my wrist, which I would eventually find was from an album cover, but it's just an image of a tree with like a heart hanging itself. Nice. Which is just a cool image. Well, mine has the owl sitting in the moon, and mm-hmm. inside the moon it has Marcus's initials. And I think it says 94 for his date of birth or something. Yeah, it's got like the date or something under it. It looks yeah. like. And Marcus then, is y'all's oldest non biological. And whatnot. And Marcus has. And his daughter's name is th- right under it. Yeah. Then yeah. I have Brooklyn's name, and it was. I, actually, that's. Remember when I said I have drawing or artwork from everybody? That's not completely. And that's I said right, I did because Daddy designed the Brooklyn, Brooklyn tattoo. It, it, and it, it has it a butterfly. It's a little too small and it's sort of run together, but not only is the bee supposed to be a butterfly, but it technically has her date of birth in the wings. Nice. It's yeah, and Marcus the has the owl, the and in his moon it says mom in it. And so, uh, designing tattoos. I've drawn a tattoo for one other person that's not in this room. Somebody commissioned me to do a portrait of them as like an anime girl sort of style. That's cool. Yeah, I was supposed to go back. And, and I, I did the concept and like the base art for another one they have that's like a mirror with um cherry blossoms in it, a uh, picture frame of cherry blossoms in it, and butterflies around it. M- my design's technically not the final one, but the final one is based on it. I think that's the final one. Yeah. Well, you were quite often my go to for tattoo art if I had some idea in mind. Makes sense. You never got Nate and Caleb's. Names. I was going to get them added somewhere in this area. They were born before or after Jeff passed away. They were, they were born before. before. I don't know. That. They were born. Do not ask me no, about my niece I don't and nephews. Think, were no, born. they weren't. They were born after because I Marcus going to be babies. Marcus couldn't be at the hospital, so he didn't meet his sons until they were discharged from the hospital because Kristen wanted her mom there, and Marcus also had to work and take care yeah. of Brooklyn and stuff. So I was Kristen's pretty sure they mom, were pandemic babies, but that's all. I'm yeah. No, Brooklyn was born before. Yeah, Brooklyn's older than pandemic. Yeah, I have Brooklyn tattooed on me as well, right below Dylan's little dino. <laughs> Not Dylan the dino, but I mean, I have all kinds of. I have Tokidoki like. Tokidoki I do have the Tokidoki, and the creator of them actually commented on it when I posted them online. That's amazing. I have a. Uh, Multiple tattoos that reference Steven Universe. I have a little book with the phrase "People who don't care" from the song from the Steven Universe movie, where you keep on turning pages for people who don't care, and I have a heart with the original Pride flag behind it. It says "Made of Love" with the star for Steven Universe. I have "I Must Not Tell Lies" from Harry Potter tattooed on my hand. Shy I have, guy. I have, yeah, two. Sh- I have one shy guy in with the Throne of Games, mm-hmm. which is a, a an image I found online, which takes like the the Iron Throne from the Game of Thrones, but incorporates all sorts of video game imagery, a lot of the swords and mm-hmm. different, the, the blue shells in there. And I and I augmented that with Shy Guy, uh, Naps to Blook, Goomba, and a Moogle. I have a pair of Shy Guys high-fiving that says Shy Guys stick together. That was for me and Dylan. Nice. So uh, the, uh, the Triforce. I have, yeah, I got that for Zelda month in 2019. It's the Triforce since 1986 because that's the year the Legend of Zelda released. Um... What else do I have? Is in, in terms of references, I have a lot of song lyrics. I have um, "You Bleed Just to Know You," "You Bleed Just to Know You're Alive" from the Goo Goo Dolls song is this "Isis" skull something? or "Iris." Is, yes, "Iris." Yeah, I, it's a Buford skull that he wears on his shirt on Phineas yeah. and Ferb. And I also have sort of a a, a washed out Doofenshmirtz and Perry, where it's just sort of the blue is highlighted and everything else mm-hmm. is in grayscale. You have a uh, Hello Kitty. I do have Bats Hello Kitty Maru. wearing Bats Maru's hat because when I first got it, we had taken a uh, a temporary tattoo yeah. as the template. But temporary tattoos are reversed because you're supposed to stick them on your arm. And yeah. we didn't catch that her bow was on the wrong side. And that just bugged me. So I went back and we threw in the Bats Maru hat and threw a little bow under it. So that's why I have Hello Kitty wearing Bats Maru's hat. Um, of course, I have other song lyrics as well. Um, I think cool me would make a cool tattoo. I have I'd Rather Hurt Than Feel Nothing At All from Lady Annabelle's song. <laughs> little humbug yeah I have a, a bug wearing a Christmas hat that's saying bah hum because I was not in really Christmas spirit one year I have a uh, Jimmy Buffett lyrics one of my favorite songwriters if it takes all the future we'll look through the past I have a uh, I often wish that I could save everyone but I'm a dreamer from Scarface's song Smile now this is one of two tattoos that I you know by the time I was an adult that I, this is one of the two tattoos I always thought I would get nice. I thought I would get it on my back shoulder and I ended up getting it on my uh, inner bicep on my left arm but that was one the other one is the word unless written in old English font mm-hmm. which I thought I would get tattooed up my forearm but by the time I finally got around to it my forearms were covered so I got it on the back of my uh, right bicep but that's of course a reference to 
the Dr. Seuss book, The Lorax, uh-huh. and the the word was the only thing the Lorax left behind. And it turns out it was from the phrase, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. So those were the two tattoos I always thought I would get. And at various times, I thought I'd get the Rolling Stones logo, the big lips with the tongue. Nice. Just because it looked cool. And when I first it saw it, cool. when I first saw it, it was a tattoo on a character in the movie, um, Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. I didn't even know it was the Rolling Stones logo. Also, um, The Undertaker, when Mark Calloway first started doing The Undertaker gimmick in the WWF, he only had one tattoo at the time, or one that was visible, and it was uh-huh. a big Grim Reaper on his arm. Like, he had his arms like hanging down, holding the scythe in front of him, and I thought that was an awesome tattoo. That's something I might have gotten at one point. Nice. I always liked Shawn Michaels' tattoo, too, that was a heart with a dagger through it, which is actually similar to your mother's butt tattoo. Yeah. But he had a snake wrapped around it to make an S, and of course that wouldn't have been appropriate, because I don't have an S in my name, or I didn't have an S friend or girlfriend or anything, but I thought that was a cool tattoo and something I would have considered. But you had a grandmother whose name started with S. Okay, but I'm not going to get a yeah, heart with no, a dagger with a snake for my grandmother. No, I was who, just trying to who think. I never called you know by her anyone? name. Yeah, I, I was know thinking, like, do you even know? What I meant is, I didn't have like S. a girlfriend or a really close yeah. friend or something that passed away. So, I mean, you know, by and large, I, I got most of the tattoos I wanted. Like I, said, I would have liked I to have gotten them. some of Johnny's art. I wanted to get a, a, a Spider Man form on my knee and I mean maybe at some point in the future I'll get those but not only did Jeff give us really good prices which helped me in my tattoo obsession but like I said he also became a friend and just that level of friendship and comfort is going to be really hard to replicate Yeah, and that's even assuming that the pandemic ever gets to the point that I'm comfortable going out and getting tattooed so who knows um, but yeah I mean I've at least got 131 tattoos technically I have more than that because I have some that are covered up so they're, they're, they're still there. They're just underneath other tattoos. And I'm only counting what's visible. I uh, Of course, we talked about the name and the owl that I got covered up with the Grim Reaper on my wrist. Mm-hmm. We talked about that on the Requiem for a Tattoo episode. I also had an image of um, Ruby from Steven Universe, mm-hmm. sort of drawn up with a double sail. But mm-hmm. I just didn't like the way the color came out on my leg. So I, I got it covered up with another heart, another broken heart in the YouTube for me. Yep. That we put some cracks in and do some, did some red splash behind it sort of like a trash polka tattoo yeah i have a couple others like this sort of uh ape the trash polka tattoo i have a a a movie clapboard with film coming out of it with the red splash behind it It says make a movie or die and technically i did make a movie so i guess i don't have to die (laughs) i just never finished it i was gonna say i mean technically you do one day but hopefully that day's very far away and i also had some of that accent added onto this little heart with the hole in it on my wrist where did that come from because that looks mo- you had a pin you had a pendant a okay. little pendant that was a heart with a hole in it and we just traced it on my wrist and had him draw it and then like i say i added the accoutrement actually the the additions there were in january of 2020 so this is actually one of the last tattoos i got the heart had been there for a while yeah. um i called this my white trash polka tattoo because it's not technically trash polka because that, that's a very specific style but it sort of looks like that um as far as other cover-ups, yeah, I think it's the heart, the Grim Reaper, and then I can say the uh, the pocket knife on my collarbone. I have yeah. a pair of them, and only one of them is covering up something. But I mean, for the most part, even the tattoos that didn't turn out exactly like I want, or even the ones that felt right at the time, but nowadays I'm like, I could do without or not. I wouldn't change any of them. I wouldn't replace any of them. Yeah. You've never covered anything up, have you, Casey? Nope. Like I, I, say, uh... I mean, there, there are some that maybe really meant something at the time and then over time I'm like they don't mean as much yeah yeah I have that feeling and there are a few that like I say didn't turn out as well as I'd hoped but uh, other than the ones I talked about they weren't to the point that I thought they needed to be covered up may, there may be some that I would get added on to at this point or yeah. adjusted but by and large I, I, you know, I love all my tattoos I have two questions <laughs> I, I, I was no, just looking back like he was talking I like, would regret like, like Donald Duck uh-huh. I what you call it you get him covered. <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily get him covered up, but he doesn't have be, as much meaning as he used to. That would be tougher to get covered up because of the colors. I originally got him. I mean, one, he goes with Mickey Mouse in a way, but two, because me and an old best friend yeah. really like Donald Duck. He's but, got goofy to go with. But now you hate Donald Duck. <laughs> he has a, almost a whole Mickey sleeve where she's got Dumbo and she's got Eeyore. Like we, we, got, we got matching Eeyores. It's the same image, but she got the blue colored Eeyore, which is more of the modern Eeyore, and I yeah. got the gray Eeyore, which is more of the classic one, which turned out to be our last tattoos, at least up to this point. But she's also got, she's got Pooh and Piglet, which she got in January of 2020. And then she's got the Mickey that started all. She's got a minion too, which isn't technical Disney, but doesn't doesn't feel out of place. Yeah, I was gonna ask a couple things. Uh, if you ever get tattoos again, one, would you get a dog for Tiny Dude? I know you have the elephant, but it seems like dogs have become it. his animal. I don't, I don't 
see the need for that. Like I, mean, I do have, like I said, I've got the shy guys for doing. I've got a dolphin for your with glasses for your mother. Uh, you know, I've gotten things that you guys liked, like the Hello Kitty. Yeah. The dinosaur for Dylan, etc. But I, I don't okay, have any need to have a dog tattoo. But but I thought about getting Spider Man for him, which is yeah. one of his favorites. Two. And like I said, I would like to get something that he drew. Oh, I also have a penguin that you drew for me. Yeah. Floating up on some balloons. Yeah. And probably other stuff that you drew for me too. I, I literally have so many tattoos; it's hard to remember them all if I'm not Reasonable. looking at them directly or looking at the. I did keep a list of all my tattoos, what they were, the day we got them, etc. That's how I was able to talk about some of this stuff with such clarity. But my other question is, uh, if ever you get tattoos again, would you ever do one of those gumball machine ones? Have you seen those? I have not. It's some artists they have like the flash or whatever, but they put it into a gumball machine and you pay so much and turn it and you get what you get. You know, whatever you happen to get, that's Probably the tattoo not. you get. Because See, I mean, like, Pokemon and like all Like you say, it, it's, it's permanent. I mean, it would depend on what the uh, the pool of tattoos is, but that's going to be on me permanently. I don't want to play games with that. <laughs> yeah, I may have made bad choices with my tattoos, but at least they were my choices. Yeah, but, like, if, if, like, the entire selection, like, you like it all, you'd be happy with any of it, you might consider it. Maybe, but I have very little room, and the space is precious at this point. I'd love to get my back tattooed again, if that were possible. For, <laughs> for as much as the back tattoo hurt, and, I mean, we've got video. I'm just gripping that chair, like, oh, yeah. God, I don't know how to get through this. And I mean, it how was many sessions did that one take? Nine. Damn. And none of them yeah. were super long. I don't think. I don't think we went more than about three. The longest one was probably the first one we did the whole outline, everything but the skulls. We did the whole Grim Reaper outline, and then he went back and put the skulls on the next time, and then we started adding in the color. But uh, now that was 2015, so eight years on, I'm like. I'd like to do that again. Even though at the time I'm like, I'm never doing this again. I'm so glad it's going to be over and I'm going to get it's it done. It's a shame. I, I, I'll get my back tattooed, but give them the pain, you know? Like, <laughs> I don't want to feel the pain. I like. I don't want to get it covered up. I mean, I, I could probably get it worked on a little bit because that big of it... That was the one tattoo I had a lot of trouble bleeding on. Not, not like I was bleeding to death or anything, but mm -hmm. Jeff always commented that, that I was a really good client because... I didn't complain. I sat really still, and I didn't bleed much. But that one, I bled a lot. And so, yeah, so, majorly. So there was a, there's a lot of the... It, it looks pretty good because his cloak's supposed to be kind of old and tattered, but it is a little mottled in some places. Uh -huh. So I could get some work done on my back tattoo, really spruce it up. So that would be something to do, but I couldn't obviously get my whole back. For one thing, there's no way you're covering up something that big. Yeah, no, unless you just want your back to be But I, But I could rock. definitely get it worked on again, so that might be cool. But I, like I say, at the time... I'm glad I don't have to do this again. Now I'm like, I want to do it again. <laughs> I'd like to get anything tattooed on I me. Mean, I miss getting tattooed. It was such a part of my, not officially day-to-day -day life, but like I say, okay, every, regular every month, at least once a month for 79 straight months. And of course, part of it was just hanging out with Jeff and hanging out with my friend, just having something to do. But I, I like having the tattoos. I like getting the tattoos. I'd love to do it again, but who knows? Yeah. Dad feels like it's cheating on Jeff. <laughs> I, It's... She's not, not a dead I, man. I might feel that way if he were still alive. I mean, he's dead now. I can't do anything about that. It's just like I say, not only not only is price an issue because, like I say, being that close to the tattooers, and he and yeah. he was a very fair pricer to begin with. I wonder if his daughter does tattooing at all. No. And are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> and um, I swear, Jeff said his daughter tattooed him once before. Just because she does. No, something she like that, she uh, he tattooed himself, and she like helped hold his. Because you know you kind of have to yeah. hold your skin tight, so she was helping him. Like she helped him with the tattoo, but he was doing the work. As I say, like even if I got a tattoo machine and tattooed dad once or twice, doesn't mean That's I'm the a thing tattoo. Too. I'm like I, I could. I, I could do it. If I, if, I, if I had a simple enough design where I felt comfortable following it, but I don't know if I could do that to myself, you know? Cause it's, I couldn't do I it to give myself. myself so much I couldn't pain do it to necessary, someone else. But to sit there and constantly do it. I don't know about that. Takes a special breed right there. Take me about a month to finish. But yeah, like I said, I'm not opposed to getting tattooed by somebody who's not Jeff. Especially since Jeff's not here, he can't do it anymore. It would have been one thing if, if he were still alive, unless it was just somebody that I was a real big fan of and had a really special opportunity. I wouldn't have gone to somebody else. But with him gone, I'm not opposed to it. It's just that pricing is a concern. And also, like I say, that level of comfort. You know, I was pretty comfortable with Jeff the first time we were there, but as we went back more and more and we got to be friends with him, it was a very comfortable situation. It's it's going to be hard to rebuild that at some point. It's, I don't have that much space left to really build up all that comfort. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if I'll ever feel that way again, but whether I do or not, I mean, it was fun taking a look back at the tattoos. Like I say, on the 10th anniversary of our first tattoos. Yes. So Dylan, there was really no reason for you to be here, I'm thinking. I'm in like day comments. You could have just played Baldur's Gate when Baldur's it came right Gate. down to it. But, but yes. I mean regardless. Well, it's like twenty years after the first two. 
I mean, hey, though, I'm, I'm, I enjoyed having you here. Thank you for joining us, and thank you to the audience for joining us, of course. Uh, this has been our look back at not really 10 years' worth of tattoos, because we've missed the last few years, but... Nearly 10 years. You know, 10 years since the first. A, a, a whole bunch of tattoos that started a decade ago. That's sort of a wordy way to say it. But anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this episode. Please come back next time when the conversation will continue. Until then, I am will continue to be Tatted Maddie. Lexi. Dylan. Casey. And this is Lexi Concluded. Bye. Bye. Sweet.